for fun meets fright, where every experience transports you to a world of fun. Play 18 holes of Blacklight Mini Golf in Ancient Egypt, a haunted house, and beyond the grave. Step inside our virtual reality arena, where you take control of video games and virtual worlds. Battle robots, shoot zombies, and compete against your friends. Throw your next birthday with our VIP party pack. Our party pros are ready to entertain you with a fright fest you'll never forget. Perfect for an action-packed date night full of flirty fun. Our state-of-the-art arcade has the latest games with the coolest prizes. Be sure to feast on some tasty morsels in the graveyard grill. So come on, bring your ghoulish gang over to Scary Strokes, where every experience matters. <laughs> welcome to Scary Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome in as we get ready to rock and roll here from the beautiful Martinsville Speedway as we are in Virginia here this evening for a wild evening of racing action. These drivers are ready to go running and gunning here this evening as we are at the paperclip looking for a wild evening of racing action. This is the place to be as these guys are about to put on one amazing show here this evening. Butt Crack Motorsports coming in with that share on the stream. Andrew Hainsley with the like. Ty Dickinson, Sweet T Gang in the house with the heart reaction. Race, C Race City Racing memorabilia coming in with that share on the broadcast. John Fowler with the like and the share. Slingshot Sim Racing with the like and the share as well. And Mama Bear Susie Dickinson coming in with that heart reaction as well. Andrew Hainsley coming in with that share on the broadcast. As ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, hopefully you guys have your Johnsonville hot dogs ready or your Martinsville hot dogs ready to go here as things are about to get a little bit wild here in this one. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. These drivers done their qualifying session. That means they'll load up their rides and get ready to rock and roll here for a wild evening of action. 32 drivers in attendance here this evening. Each and every one of them looking to try to pick up the checkered flag. As they get lined up out there on the track, each and every one of them looking for the win. But every one of them is going to be chasing down the 71 ride. The Liberty Flames, Liberty University 71 one of Greg O'Berry on that pole position here picked up the win last week our first time three-time winner last weekend in your know, last Wednesday and he's looking to try to make it four in a row here at Martinsville Speedway he told us in his post-race interview that this is one of his favorite racetracks and starting on the pole position showing us why that uh, he's going to be one of those cars to beat Michael Madden, the Sparkle and Shine, anything electric, anything EC machine, there to his outside Madden starting in position number two. His teammate, the Sparkle and Shine, number 14, right, that's Daniel Doe, there in position number three. He's got Nicholas Cody there in the All-Stars, Alpine, skis number 45, right, to his outside. The Scary Strokes Arcade, number 43, right, of Doug Roth starting there in the fifth position. He's got the anything electric, anything EC number 19 of Sean Jessick to his outside. The 41 ride of William McKellar starting there in 7th to his outside in the track racer number 31 that is Christian Delgado starting in the ninth spot. On the inside of row at number 5 is the 82 of Christopher DeWald to his outside in the number 20 machine is the Autism Awareness ride that is the beautiful machine here with the Buck Crack Motorsports ride of Russell Martin. Starting in the 11th position is the 25 ride of David Trailer to his outside the Hooters machine. That is James Smith. Keith Hackney in the 24 ride in the Race City Racing memorabilia. Cody Williams designs Camaro of the 24 of Cody DeForge. There in row number seven, Tyler Humphrey, Leroy Koblenz, Jeremy Vaughn, Isaac Brock, John Fowler in his new look and scary strokes number 11 ride. There in the 20th position as he's got the Sparkle and shine six ride of Nathan Nixon to his outside. 
There you see Ronald Lousy in the 15 machine. Timothy Subblefield, John McNeil, Ty Dickinson in the Michelob Ultra. Papa Mike Promotions, Black Diamond Mafia number uh, 67 ride there in 24. Bryce Dickinson in the Papa Mike Promotions at E and D Farms, a number 84 ride there in 25th. And then we see Nathan Smith to his outside. Adam Bennett, Sean Cozier, Gary Wright, Zach Lockett, Andrew Hainsley rounding out our field as we get ready to go green flag racing. We end all the anticipation with our feature presentation as we are quickly green flag racing. And look at these drivers already duking it out. Here this evening, looking to try to make it three wide a little farther back there. We saw some drivers shuffling around, but out in front, it is the 71 of Grango Berry who leads the way. Barry out in front. Daniel Doe going to get himself up into position. Number two is contact right out of the gate. The 17 ride. A Michael Madden going to go for a spin here. Everyone trying to avoid him. Is the field going to split that 17 machine as he is going to go to the rear of the field here? A heartbreaker. For our outside of the front row pole sitter here, that is the number 17 of Michael Madden. So he's going to get a little bit of a bump and a little bit of a run here in quarter number one. And unfortunately, that contact just going to send him sideways in right here. Oh, yeah, the 45 right. Well, he's getting pushed from the 19 as I think things got a little bit tight back there behind him as he's trying to clear the 19 machine. Unfortunately for Nicholas Cody, he's going to get a good run here. He's going to cut down in front of the 19 ride as he gets in front of him here. Unfortunately, he is going to get shoved into the 17 ride of Michael Madden. Madden, unfortunately, going to get the worst end of this deal as he is going to go for a slide up through the middle of the Martinsville corner. Number one and two, luckily enough, not a lot of damage on any of these drivers, but unfortunately... Not the way he wanted things to go this evening. Qualifying in that second spot, knowing he needs to have himself a good run here this evening and obviously already being set back into the rear of the field is definitely not a spot he wants to be as that's a lot of cars and not a lot of passing opportunities out there on the racetrack for that number 17 ride as we will get them stacked up, racked up, and ready to go back to green flag racing. You see the sparkle and shine, anything EC ride rolling out there on the racetrack. Unfortunately, at the rear of the field back in the 31st position so early in the race going from outside the front row in the second spot all the way back to 31st is definitely got to be a tough break there for that uh, number 17 ride Mama Bear says, let's go Dickinson boys and let's go John Fowler. Mama Bear coming in, showing the love here with the drivers out there on the racetrack. Always cheering on our boys, cheering on John Boy out there on the racetrack is the 11 ride. Brand new paint scheme here. The scary strokes in number 11 of John Fowler looking to have himself a great evening. Looking to try to get that scary strokes ride up in victory lane or up onto the podium here is the Dirty Monkey Motorsports Machine. Looking pretty good here currently in the, the mid-pack here in the 19th position right now. We'll see if he can work himself closer and closer to the front of the field. As right now at the front of the field, it's the 71 ride of Grant Gobert. O'Berry leading the way here. He's going to get ready for this restart as the pace car going to make the hard left-hand turn back down pit side. And we're going to get ready for our first restart here at Martinsville. And this is where things can get very interesting in a quick, quick hurry. Is the 71 of Grant Gobert into the Geico restart zone. He is going to hammer down and quickly clear the 14 right of Daniel Doe. Doe going to dive right down to the inside here trying to get to that bottom lane is right now that seems to be the preferred line out there on the racetrack you want to be in the inside lane as you can get freight trained up there on the high side if drivers get lined up behind you you can go from hero to zero in a quick quick hurry and unfortunately here we already saw one driver go to the rear of the field a lot of other drivers trying to hang on to their position as the 19 right here Sean Jessic slides back a couple spots early on in this run he slides all the way back in that sixth position finds that inside lane though finds a gap and keeps on rolling as we are going to see our second caution flag of the evening so our second caution flag going to come out here in this one a quick look at it is adam pettit in the 46 ride 
Anything electric, anything EC ride, having some issues looking down to the inside of. Ooh, oh, oh, man, a tough break right there. That is the 92. The 99 Ryan is Timothy Stubblefield and Nathan Smith. Both nowhere to go here. He's getting a good run, trying to roll the inside lane. He gets a great run here. Jams the brakes, though, as he was coming in with a whole head of steam to the back bumper of the 84 of Bryce Dickinson. Unfortunately, cuts down into the inside wall, bounces off that inside wall, straight up the racetrack into the side of Nathan Smith and into that 92 ride as well. And... Fortunately, they're both going to get up into the outside fence there as well. And that's a pretty heavy contact right there in this one. Papa Mike says, uh, heads up. Papa Mike is going to uh, heart the stream. Oh, baby. Papa Mike coming in with that heart reaction here on the broadcast. Alan Peters coming in with that like on the stream as well. I appreciate you guys coming in, showing the love. As we'll get another look at it right here. And this 46, Ryan, just trying to stay out of the 48. Unfortunately, puts himself into trouble. Comes up the track hard into Nathan Smith. Hard into the 92 ride of Timothy Stumblefield. And a tough break here for all those drivers and some heavy damage here for that 46 Ryan just trying to get it turned on the racetrack is a tough task here a tall task as he's trying to get that car turned around and oh man our race leaders having to dodge him right there as well as that will put him a lap down and deep in the field here is we will get them stacked up, racked up, and ready to go back to Green Flag Racing, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that follow and subscribe button as we're going to get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. Michael Madden says, good luck, Michael Madden Jr. out there on the racetrack. Julie Madden coming in as well says, good luck, Michael Madden from his mother. Good to see Mama Madden and Papa Madden up in the chat here cheering on Michael there on the racetrack. Brandino says, good luck to all the drivers, but let's go. Number 43, Roth. Cheered on Doug Roth out there on the track. The scary strokes. Number 43, Ryan, having a good run so far. Finds himself here in position number three. A beautiful looking paint scheme here on his ride as well as this car is looking absolutely scary. Stroked out and looking very good here this evening at the front of the field. As we will get them stacked up, racked up, and ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that follow and subscribe button if you're watching over on YouTube. As we get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing, we'll stack them up. Two by two by two as Josh Dutton says, let's go. Cody DeForge cheered on DeForge here this evening as Cody having a good run here himself. He's, uh, he's just outside the top 10 here, running on the outside of Keith Hackney. That uh, 24 race city racing memorabilia number 24 ride finds himself there just on the outside of the top 10. As we get ready to go back to green flag racing, down through the Geico restart zone, Greg O'Berry quickly back onto the loud pedal. Here you go, a great restart there as well for Nicholas Cody. Cody to the inside here. Daniel Doe is Doug Roth looking for a hole, but here comes Willie McKellar. McKellar going to try to fill it. Here is contact around goes Sean Jessick up into the fence. Goes the 82 ride. Some more contact back there as that is the number 48 of John McNeil. Getting a piece of that one as well in some tough contact again here at the front of the field. And unfortunately, for Jessic, he is going to find out the tough way here in this one. How quickly things can go astray here this evening. Is that 19 ride trying to roll the inside lane, trying to squeeze the 25 ride down, trying to find a hole here to get that inside lane? Unfortunately, things get a little bit too tight. They make some contact and... Unfortunately, the rear end just steps out, goes around here on that number 19 ride, the Liberty University ride of, I do believe that is the 82 ride. That is, sorry, I'm drawing a blank right now. That is the 82 of Christopher DeWald, who's going to get a big piece of the 21 ride. The 48, both getting some pretty good contact there as well. The 15 ride, going to give a shot to the 48, who gets a piece of... John Fowler right there in some uh, pretty hard contact back and forth out there on the racetrack as we will take a, another look at it and see what happened here is just some good hard racing on the restart and unfortunately that's how the cookie crumbles here at Martinsville Speedway this is a classic Martinsville 
contact. Classic Martinsville caution flag. And fortunately, nowhere to go for the 82. The 10 ride doing a great job there getting onto the binders and avoiding any serious contact as if we can play that back. We're going to jump right on board here with Sean Jessick and see what he sees here from the cockpit as button's not working. Button's not working. We're going a little too far here. Too far, too far, too far. Let's go forward. Forward, 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 forward. This does not play faster. All right, it's right on the restart. Well, we're going to see it here. This number 19 trying to get to the inside lane here. Just unfortunately can't find a hole. He's trying to find a way. He's already allowed two drivers down underneath of him here to get by. And he's trying to get down low as quick as possible to try to hold himself in that spot. Unfortunately, there's the contact. Around he goes. A couple beats and bangs and some heavy damage there on his right as he takes it straight down pit side. And a tough break there for John, Sean Jessick. In that beautiful, beautiful number 19 ride, the Anything Electric Machine, as that is going to unfortunately put him back behind the wall and possibly out of this race as we'll get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. Darnell uh, Scobie coming in with that like on the stream. Darnell, how are you? How are you doing? Coming in some match that thumbs up. Papa Mike coming in with that share on the stream as well. Rod Drummer coming in with the like and Jeff Dickinson coming in with that heart reaction here on the broadcast. Coming in, showing the love as we will get them ready to go back to Green Flag Racing here at Martinsville Speedway. As these drivers are ready to go to battle, they're ready to duke it out here once again. And things are going to get very, very interesting here in a quick, quick hurry. As Penny says, go Nader, cheering on Nader out there on the racetrack. As there is a lot of talent out here. And these drivers are going to have their hands full all evening long as Grand Go Barry. Looking for win number four here on the series is that number 71 hits the Geico restart zone perfectly here. And once again, gets a great launch, quickly clears that outside lane, and he's looking to try to open up a lead as the battles back there behind him continue to brew. Nicholas Cody trying to hold on to position number, oh, David Trailer. Going to go around, William McKellar collected in that one. More contact down the front, straight away the big one. Here at Martinsville is a bunch of drivers collecting the 94 ride. That's Tyler Humphrey, the 24. Cody DeForge, Russell Martin Jr., the 21 ride of Isaac Brock collected in there as well. But it all starts here. At the front of the field once again, David Trailer having some issues down out of quarter number four. He gets a little bit of a bump here, and unfortunately, that is going to spin him around, and we'll take a look and see what happens. Miguel will try to work to his inside here on the restart. Doesn't quite get there. 25 clears him, but the 41 continues to try to roll the inside lane here in quarter number three. No contact here. The 25, Ryan, just looking to have a good run out of corner number four here. But the 41 getting a great run. And, oh, you did see the 43 right there. That may have been what caused this. The 43 ride getting a little bit sideways. And as he does, Doug Roth creates a little bit of smoke right there. The 25 machine having to get onto the binders to avoid the contact as he gets checked up. The 41 right coming with a big head of steam, unfortunately gets a piece of them, and they both go spinning down into that inside wall. And then from that point on, it's on like Donkey Kong as drivers just trying to avoid each other here as Russell Martin and the 24 come together up on the high side, trying to avoid the cars down low. You see the 15 spin around there, trying to avoid all the carnage as well. Then here's the contact, the 24 into the 94, nowhere to go for Isaac Brock. You see McNeil trying to slide through there as well. Here comes John Fowler trying to get through that. Leroy Koblenz in there as well as hard contact with that outside wall there for the 24 right of the forge. And unfortunately, some heavy contact and some good damage out there for a lot of these drivers is definitely going to set these guys uh, back quite a bit here early in this race with uh, possible pit strategies possible fresh tires and then obviously the damage you can race around this racetrack with quite a bit of damage here so that's only the one good thing is that you won't see a lot of drivers unfortunately well won't be taken 
out of the race par se. There's going to be a lot of drivers that may call it an evening early as uh, some drivers definitely not a fan of this racetrack. As you see Russell Martin down pit side, William McKellar down there as well as Timothy Stubblefield back onto the lead lap here. So Stubblefield looking to try to work himself back up through the field. There's the J.C. Newman Cigar Company number 25 of David Trailer right back there with them as well as they're going to try to work themselves up through the field here in this one but it is very very tough it's tough sliding out there on the racetrack that little bit of contact that little bit of beating and banging can end your night in a quick quick curry as we will get them stacked up racked up and ready to go back to green flag racing my boy colby ely colby coming in Smashing that like on the stream. How are you, Colby? Colby coming in, showing the love here in this one with the like on the stream. As we get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing, the 71 of Greg O'Berry looking to pick up checkered flag number four here on the series so far. He has been the reflection of perfection here this evening. He's led every single lap so far, and he continues to look to keep that trend pointed in the right direction. But don't look now, because here comes the 91 rider, Keith Hackney. Hackney working himself up towards the front of the field here, already up 10 positions, and he's into position number four and looking for more as he works to the inside here of the Sparkle and Shine number 14 ride, the House of Speed Pop of Mike Promotions, NLR number 91 of Keith Hackney up inside the top three. So Hackney, a man on the move to the front of the field here, now up 11 positions, and in that third spot is Daniel Doe, Christian Delgado, rounding out our top five. Doug Ross sliding back into that sixth position here on the restart with Christopher DeWall. Jeremy Vaughn up 10 spots as well. They're in position number eight. Cody DeForge and James Smith rounding out our top 10 as we are going to see the caution flag fly here yet again. So the caution flag going to come back out. This time looks like Tyler Humphrey having some issues again in the must love poodles number 94 Toyota as like he is going to send it into corner number three here. He's running about the 11th position and just loses the rear end there. The, the rear end just steps out, goes around, possibly up into the marbles there or hits something. And, and just unfortunately, the rear end steps out, goes around on him here. He's just trying to hang on to it and then last the locker up to avoid sliding into the blue emo Mountain Dew. Corner four wall there and uh, avoiding any additional contact there with the rest of the field as he gets up onto the outside fence. Holds that break down in a tough break there for Tyler Humphrey, but a quick caution flank as we'll get ready to go back to battle. Doing good, brother. Doing good. How about yourself? I am always doing good, Kobe. I am always doing good. I'm always doing absolutely fine. And we are ready to just see some wild racing action here all evening long. And it's good to see you up here in the chat coming in, showing the love here in this one. As we will get them stacked up, racked up, and ready to go here in just a few more moments. But we'll get a quick word in here from our sponsor, Scary Strokes. Fun meets fright, where every experience transports you to a world of fun. Play 18 holes of blacklight minigolf in ancient Egypt, a haunted house, and beyond the grave. Step inside our virtual reality arena, where you take control of video games and virtual worlds. Battle robots, shoot zombies, and compete against your friends. Throw your next birthday with our VIP party pack. Our party pros are ready to entertain you with a fright fest you'll never forget. Perfect for an action-packed date night full of flirty fun. Our state-of-the-art arcade has the latest games with the coolest prizes. Be sure to feast on some tasty morsels in the graveyard grill. So come on, bring your ghoulish gang over to Scary Strokes, where every experience matters. <laughs> Welcome to Scary Strokes, where fun meets fright, where every experience transports you to a world of fun. Play 18 holes of blacklight minigolf in ancient Egypt, a haunted house, and beyond the grave. Step inside our virtual reality arena, where you take control of video games and virtual worlds. Battle robots, shoot zombies, and compete against your friends. Roll your next birthday with our VIP party pack. 
Our party pros are ready to entertain you with a fright fest you'll never forget. Perfect for an action-packed date night full of flirty fun. Our state-of-the-art arcade has the latest games with the coolest prizes. Be sure to feast on some tasty morsels in the graveyard grill. So come on, bring your ghoulish gang over to Scary Strokes, where every experience matters. <laughs> Alrighty, as we get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing, my boy, Clink, Justin Glinsterberg, Justin coming in with that like on the stream. How are you, Clink? How are you doing this evening as we are going back to Green Flag Racing here at Martinsville Speedway? Quickly, the 71 of Greg O'Berry back onto the lap pedal. O'Berry out in front as here comes Keith Hackney now up into position number two as he makes the move around Nicholas Cody. Cody trying to hang on to third. Here's a little contact up the racetrack. Goes Daniel Doe. Doe unfortunately going to lose a handful of spots right there after that little bit of contact between himself and the 31 as they're both trying to work themselves around that 45 of Nicholas Cody. Doug Roth up inside the top five here once again as that feet number five right in 43 right up into position number five here once again. Sorry, sometimes words are tough as we look through the field here. Jeremy Vaughn up 10 positions on the racetrack. Finds that grip. Hackney Live, House of Speed, Papa Mike Promotions, and LR Toyota up inside the top 10 now. In that eighth position as James Smith and Cody DeForge round out our top 10. Nathan Nixon in a pretty beat up number 48 of John McNeil battle back there for the 11th spot on the track as they see a little car Attacked. Around goes Ronald Lousy and a couple more drivers collected here as well. We see Bryce Dickinson turned around. They're in quarter number four and the caution flag will fly here once again. Bryce Dickinson gets the E in D Farms. Papa Mike Promotions number 84. Ryan pointed back in the right direction here. We'll take a look and see what happened is... I'm not sure if he had some help. It looks like maybe just losing it. He's all over the back bumper here. Michael Madden, our outside pulsator, he gets in there a little bit too hard. Gets a big piece of the back bumper. As you do see the 42 ride of Leroy Koblenz go up the racetrack here. You see the 84 lose that rear end. Goes for a loop-de-loop. -loop. A good heads-up move there by Nathan Smith to avoid him. And then we see some more drivers coming in here late on and trying to avoid this number 84. Everyone just trying to do what they can. And unfortunately, the 97 is going to come in here and just... Get a piece of them right there. Some pretty good contact between himself and that 84 ride. We also saw the 15 of Ronald Lousy having some issues there as well as he lost it coming out of corner number four as well as things very, very slick here at Martinsville. And obviously a little contact and around goes that 15 ride. The Black Rifle Coffee Company machine going for a loop-de-loop -loop there as well and that will get us restacked and ready to refire here at Martinsville Speedway as... We're going to get back to going here in this one. I'm good. You got commercials now? Laugh out loud? Yes, Clink. We got some commercials in here for a few of our different series. A few of our different series. We do have some uh, some commercials in there for the sponsors that are generous to put their money up for whether it's the league or myself or anything else. We always like to give them as much screen time and ad time as that we can here. And it's a lot better having their ads than, uh, you know, Facebook ads or Twitch ads or anything else. As uh, Those ones are a lot more or cookie cutter at least this way we can support those that uh support these drivers support these leagues and support myself up here in the broadcast booth as we get ready to go back to battle here greg o'berry out in front keith acne there to his outside we haven't seen a whole lot of green flag racing here so acne has been able to use these restarts to his advantage up 12 spots on the racetrack and up into position number two and he may not be done yet Is that grip hacking live number 91 right it's pretty easy to see him out there on the racetrack it's probably the brightest car out there that uh baby blue navy blue looking kind of car right there very very bright very good looking machine here is hackney always coming to the racetrack well represented and showing off all his sponsors on that 91 right here perfectly as he's put himself into a great position at martinsville speedway to possibly jump up here and take a win away from grego berry not a lot of people have been able to do that this season is that 71 right has almost been untouchable here for the last few weeks as he's been on a heck of a streak and he's picked up some pretty good 
checkered flags. He's letting a lot of laps in, had a lot of opportunities and some other wins, and he's already picked up three checkered flags here early on in the season, and we're only about eight races into the season, so he's all, or I think we're seven races. This is race number eight, so if he can win this evening, he could be 50-50 uh, on the season, 50% win average for Greg O'Berry, and I think that's setting in the back of his mind as he would love to have that kind of statistic here after eight races here in the series. As O'Berry out in front, he is the control car here down through the Geico restart zone. So he fires when he pleases, and he gets a great restart, and he's able to use it to his advantage to clear the 91 ride and have a nice and easy breezy corner number one and two. But here comes Acme quickly right to his back bumper as Keith was able to use that good jump to his advantage. Quickly got down to that inside lane as you see Nicholas Cody trying to work himself around the 31 of Christian Delgado for that third spot on the track as we do see the caution flag fly here once again in this one. Some more contact, some more carnage out there on the racetrack. This one up inside the top 10 as it's like Jeremy Vaughn may get collected in this one. That beautiful house of speed number two ride. Fortunately, just cuts down the racetrack. I don't think he realized he was clear and unfortunately for him, 24 ride wasn't going to lift. He wasn't going to give him that spot. And unfortunately, they make some contact here. As there you go, you see the two ride cut down the track over the nose of Cody to forge to forge. Getting into him here and trying to get onto the binders. Unfortunately, they can't get checked up quick enough. The two ride sideways rolls up the racetrack. The 24 getting into the 82. The 82 going to follow this two ride up into the outside fence. Some heavy contact for all three of those drivers. And then we see Nathan Nixon get a piece of Cody DeForge there as well as that was definitely not the way these drivers drew it up. And there is a ton of damage on this two machine as we will jump right on board here with Jeremy Vaughn and see what he sees here from the helmet cam. See this contact as, oh, not much he can do except for hang on and go for the ride. And unfortunately for Jeremy Vaughn, that is a lot of damage. He may be down pit side here for quite a while. So maybe that number 24 ride and, uh, 82 as well, heavy damage, and those drivers are definitely going to be looking to try to get these cars repaired. You see the wall down pit side. There's Cody DeForge down there as well, getting some repairs done to the Race City Racing memorabilia. Probably had the least amount of damage between uh, the three of them there into the outside fence. As definitely not the way he drew this one up as we will get ready to go back to green flag racing we'll get ready to set him back loose as out in front greg o'berry still leading the way here still showing these drivers how to get it done as he has been the reflection of perfection he's led every single lap so far not a whole lot of laps under the green flag condition a lot of caution laps here in this one as we roll up towards our uh 50 laps in and 100 laps left to go. Our one-third marker here in this feature event already. Things are moving along. Things are clicking along here in a fast, fast, rapid pace here, but not as quick as what we would see under green flag. Obviously, we're on cruise control here during a yet again another yellow at Martinsville Speedway, and I do believe we're going to see the lights turn off. The official I Racing pace car, there they go as... Lap 48 goes up on the board. Lap 49, we will see that restart. And 71 rider, Greg O'Berry, going to be looking for another perfect restart. As we're going to jump right on board here. Let's jump on board with Doug Roth and the Scary Strokes, number 43. As we're going to crank it up here on Peacemaker Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, crank up that volume. Cheer on your favorite driver as we crank it up here on Peacemaker Gaming.
one. 17 of Michael Madden in there as well in more damage. Down the front straight away as we will take a look back and see what happened here. As the house is speed, Papa Mac Promotions number 99, right? And Nathan Smith has not had a whole lot of luck here. Ever since picking up the win early in the season, he got the job done at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And ever since then, he's just been trying to hang on to this car and keep it out of trouble. And unfortunately, trouble's going to find him here once again, as it looks like the two rider Jeremy Vaughn, the 17 of Michael Madden, going to make some contact right here. Madden going to get right underneath the two right. I don't think Vaughn realized it. Not enough room down low. They make contact. Around goes Jeremy Vaughn. As Vaughn's spinning sideways, they kind of get tied together here. They bounce off each other. And unfortunately, they come right up the racetrack into that 99 ride of Nathan Smith as that Heartland Harley-Davidson ride goes for a bit of a spill down towards that infield wall. He's going to make some good contact with it as... The outside wall is uh, meant by the sparkle and shine. Anything EC number 17 of Michael Madden. We'll play it back here and see if we can get another look at it as some tough breaks out there on the racetrack. Some tough hits out there for the drivers as you yeah, have quickly things happen here. And not a whole lot you can do when other cars are spinning out around you and getting up into you. And fortunately for Nathan Smith, he's going to find out the hard way here is some pretty good damage right there for him as... Contact in front of him. He's trying to get around it, trying to get by it. Unfortunately, just gets tagged and slides down into that inside fence. And luckily enough, everyone else able to avoid additional contact there with him and the 17 ride. So they'll be able to keep on rolling out there on the racetrack. But they are using up their equipment here pretty aggressively on the racetrack. Is out in front. Grango Berry just continue to do Grango Berry things, and that is lead the way. That Liberty University, Liberty Flames, 71 ride. It's been the reflection of perfection here all evening long. He continues to lead the way. He's led every lap so far, and he has Keith Hackney right there behind him. Christian Delgado up into third. Nicholas Cody back into fourth. With Doug Roth, Daniel Doe, James Smith, Nathan Nixon, John McNeil, and David Trailer rounding out our top ten. Zach Lockett, the Tennessee Titans number 93 right there in 11th with William McKellar, John Fowler, Andrew Ainsley, and Leroy Koblenz rounding out our top 15. John Gozier, Tyler Humphrey, Ronald Lousy, Gary Wright, and Jeremy Vaughn. Our top 20 here is Bryce Dickinson, Ty Dickinson rounding out our top 22, Michael Madden, Nathan Smith, Christopher DeWald, our top 25 is Russell Martin, currently scored in 26. Cody DeForge in 27th. Isaac Brock off the racetrack there in 28th. Timothy Stubblefield also off the racetrack there in the 92 ride. Sean Jessic, Adam Pettit, all calling it an evening here this evening. So we've already lost about four or five drivers here on the night as we'll get ready for another fight here at Martinsville Speedway. The base car makes that hard left hand turn back down pit side. We look for O'Berry to hit the restart zone here down through the Geico restart zone. He will see that green flag fly quickly off that loud pedal and quickly out in front as here comes a good run to the inside. Christian Delgado trying to find a hole there underneath the 91 ride of Keith Hackney, but Hackney with a great run and a great drive is able to stay there in position number two. As Grango Berry out in front, going to see another caution flag here. Cautions breeding cautions here at Martinsville Speedway. And definitely not the way we wanted things to go here this evening for any of these drivers. Let's uh, get another look at it here. Looked like Bryce Dickinson having some issues here. I think this was earlier. Take a look here. That was a little bit earlier. That was the uh, third or fourth caution. This is the most recent caution, unfortunately, uh, involving the 84 ride of Bryce Dickinson here once again. Him and Nathan Smith is Smith. Oh, I don't know what just happened to Nathan Smith, but that car just turned dead left right there. In that 99 ride, I don't know, something finally let loose. He did have some contact and some damage still on his car from that uh, caution flag just beforehand. As he sends it into the corner here, this car just snaps hard left down the racetrack right there. 
Just steps out straight down the track. Luckily enough, avoids the 20 of Russell Martin. Avoids the 82 of DeWald. And Frank Dickinson might have gotten a little piece of him, but really not too much damage there for the E&D Farms. Number 84, Ryan, is the Papa Mike Promotions. Dirty Monkey Motorsports, 84 of Brian Dickinson going to scroll around that. And fortunately for Nathan Smith, I don't know what might have just happened there on that 99, Ryan. Is that is definitely a pretty weird one as we will get ready to go back to green flag racing here in just a few more moments. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if anyone else is interested in joining a league, unfortunately this one is already closed up. I'm not sure if they're kicking any new drivers, but we do know the Outcast Racing League Sunday evenings. Uh, practice starts at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Racing action at 4 o'clock Eastern Time is always looking for new drivers and new friendly faces to join the fun. If anyone's interested, make sure you check out Outcast Racing League and get a hold of them today to join our Sunday Fun Day. as we're going to get ready to go back to green flag racing. Out of quarter number four, O'Berry once again going to see that green flag fly as Sweet D up in the chat. Ty Dickinson says, I'm having fun. Well, I, I'm just glad you're having fun out there, Ty. That's all that matters, brother. That's all that matters as long as you're having fun out there on the racetrack. I'm sure a lot of other drivers are having a good time right now, especially Grango Barrius. He has had some research that he's just had to work a little bit tougher on, a little bit harder on here with that 91 ride of Keith Hackney right there behind him. And we'll get him sized up for another one as the caution flag going to quickly come right back out. Here's the 10 ride. The Hooters machine up inside the top 10 here. Just looks like, oh, the 80 or 48 ride of McNeil. This gets in there a little bit too hard. Unfortunately, just the rear tires start to chatter, start to hop there. And unfortunately, he's just going to make some hard contact right here with this 10 ride. Going to drive in there, drives underneath him hard into that left rear quarter panel and just spins the 10 right around here. A little contact there for the 14. No major damage as the 48 of McNeil does get up into the outside fence here. And Definitely some pretty heavy contact there for the uh, 48 ride. Not a whole lot of damage for the 10 as you do see the 15 trying to get around him there. Unfortunately for Lousy, he gets a piece of it, gets some pretty good contact there into the back bumper of that 10 ride. As we will get them stacked up, racked up, and are ready to go back to green flag racing, we'll get these drivers stacked up, racked up, and ready to go once again. Heck yeah, more asphalt cars. We still got your cherry though. Yes, sir. Yes, you guys definitely did. Definitely did. That's for certain. That's for certain. One of the uh, first asphalt series that uh, was ever on Peacemaker Gaming over there with the Outcast Racing League. Make sure you guys check them out and join in on that fun. Is my boy Anthony Garland coming in with that like and the share on the stream coming in, showing the love here in this one as. Bit of a wild night here, Martinsville. Such a wild card race. Sometimes we see some of the best racing action. Sometimes it's uh, it's a little tougher to watch than usual. And sometimes when you just see the abundance of caution flags, makes things that much tougher. As we'll get ready to go back to green flag racing here in just a few more moments. I'm going to take a quick pee break, but we'll get ready to go back to racing action here in just a few more moments.
we're going to go back to battle here in this one. Up through the gears here goes the 71 of Greg O'Berry as he sees that green flag fly once again. Another great restart here for that 71 machine and another good restart for Keith Hackney as he's able to quickly jump down to that inside lane, get to the back bumper of our race leader. And O'Berry has some, uh, he's got a little bit of competition there on his back bumper and that's going to make things very, very difficult here for him. But he gets a great run out of quarter number four as he looks to try to pull away once again here in this one as O'Berry out in front. And unfortunately, Kasha Flatten going to come right back out here. Ron allows he having some issues in the 15 ride here. And he's going to go for a spill and a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop down here at quarter number three and four as that Black Rifle Coffee Company ride just gets into the uh, inside berm there. There's a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a curve. And as he hits that curve, the car just kind of jumps up, breaks traction, and unfortunately, just definitely not the way he wanted things to go down here out at quarter number four is you're going to see that. Oh, we played her a little too fast there. Let's play her back here. Let's go back. We wanted to see what happened here. There you go. You'll see this little contact right there with that white and red curb. And as he does, it just kind of hops the car up, unbalances the rear end, and just loses traction and goes around and into the inside wall there for the... Black Rifle Coffee Company, number 15, Ryan, and that's a tough break for him getting collected. And another one out there on the track, and we'll have to get ready for another restart here this evening. Anthony Garland says, Outcast Racing League, send some love, my man. Can't wait to see you Sunday. Yes, sir, Anthony, can't wait to see you guys back in action. Good to see you guys back out there this past Sunday, and I can't wait for more and more amazing racing action Sunday evening with uh, all the boys over there at Outcast Racing League. And talking about some of them, I see uh, Chris Peters up into the chat here as well. What's good, Chris? Chris Peters coming in, showing the love, some matching that like on the stream as well. How are you, Mr. Peters? Tyler Christensen coming in, showing the love over there on YouTube. Says, hi, happy Wednesday to you, bud. Uh, I hope you have a good race, bud. I am watching from Sioux Falls, all the way from Sioux Falls. Tuning in here, one of the Montana boys coming in and showing the love here this evening. And good to see you up in the chat, Tyler, as we'll get these drivers ready to go back to battle here in just a few more moments. Is Keith Acne is at this uh, view for quite a while. Trying to hunt down the 71 ride of Grango Berry. Trying to figure out a restart to get around him. And we'll have to wait and see if he can find something late in this race. is we're going to get ready to go back to green flag racing. The pace car making the hard left-hand turn back down pit side. We are going to get ready to set them loose here once again from the beautiful Martinsville Speedway. Hopefully everyone's got their Martinsville hot dogs and uh, their popcorn here for a wild show as things come to a close in a quick, quick hurry as we just rolled through. Halfway in and halfway to go. If we can get a couple laps in here, I'd love to jump into a quick piece of Maker Gaming, crank it up, but we'll have to wait and see if these drivers can make it around the racetrack here for a few clean laps as Keith Hackney Trying to go to work here on the back bumper of the 71 ride. Continues to try to find some speed. Continues to try to find a lane to jump up here in battle with that 71 ride. As 
Hackney's been up there in that second spot for quite a while. Nathan Nixon slowly but surely working himself up through the field here as well as the six machine up into position number six. He's up 13 spots on the racetrack. We look a little farther back there. We see Andrew Hainsley now inside the top 10 as Hainsley in the 29 ride having himself a heck of a run, a heck of a drive here this evening finds himself up inside the top 10. Gets a little bit loose there up the high side of the racetrack. Looks like he's going to lose a little internet connection right here. Able to get it back going. That's Unfortunately, he's going to give up a couple spots here. John Fowler and Tyler Humphrey both going to get around that Sonic graphic design number 29 ride. Now Zach Locke, you try to work down to his inside as well as ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're going to jump into a quick peacemaker game. Never mind. Caution flag going to come right back out here in this one is unfortunately for Brycey Bear, Bryce Dickinson. Looks like he's going to run into some more issues here in the e and Farms. Pop of Mike Promotions, number 84, as he sends it into corner number three here. Just kind of loses the rear end a little bit. Almost had it corrected, unfortunately. Goes back around again, and that gets clocked here by Gary Wright. Gary just unfortunately comes in there a little bit late. Couldn't get checked up, and pretty hard contact here with that 84 ride. As we'll take a another look at it here to see what happened to Bryce Dickinson as that is a tough break here for that 84 ride and tough hit between himself and Gary Wright as Gary just, oh man, nowhere to go and unfortunately the Sunday Amazon ride having some issues there, some pretty hard contact with them and that is going to cause quite a bit of damage to the front end of that one machine as out in front the one machine that's been at the front of the field here all evening long continue to be Greg O'Berry as O'Berry looking to try to pick up win at number four here on the series. This car has been almost unstoppable week in and week out. He has been very, very fast and we made his Streamlabs and everything just decided to crash. Nope, still good on Streamlabs. Facebook is, oh, okay, okay. Looks like it's back. Mama Bear says, dang it, Bryce Dickinson. Dang it, she says, dang it. Dang it, Brycey Bear. What in the world? What in the world is he doing out there doing things like that? Come on now, Bryce. Come on now, brother. <laughs> Can't be doing that. No, I'm just kidding. Some good racing, though. Some great action out there on the racetrack. Caution flags aside, it's been a good race. So many repairs back to a lap down. Oh, no. Tight, brother. Not another lap down. Hopefully, well, I mean, hopefully we don't see another caution flag, but... Uh, this trends would say, would have it. We're bound to see at least a another caution flag here over the next little bit, and possibly see so get that uh, lucky dog in towards the elite lap here once again. So we'll get them stacked up though, racked up and ready to go here for yet again another green flag as out in front that number not 71 ride. Brango Berry continuing to lead the way, continuing to show these drivers how to get it done here this evening as we get ready to go back to battle. Brango Berry going to be looking for that green flag start. And I'm amazed we haven't went single file yet. Honestly, I'm amazed we haven't went to single file restarts. Uh, definitely would have probably crossed my mind already a time or two out there on the racetrack, especially for the admins having to make all these tough decisions and drivers that are getting collected in things and I'm sure Grango Berry's loving it as that's giving him a little bit of a break and keeping Hackney off his back bumper just ever so slightly out there on the racetrack but uh, I don't know the, the double file restarts are just absolutely having a heyday here for some drivers as they are definitely struggling here on the evening a lot of caution flanks and a lot of tough breaks a lot of tough hits there drivers getting Collected in things, just nothing of their own, just nowhere for them to go if they're on the track and then getting tied up in Rex as we are going to go back to Green Flag Racing. This time, though, a great restart for Keith Hackney. He timed that one perfectly, gets a great jump. He stays to the outside of the 71. Keith Hackney looking to try to jump up here and maybe be the first driver to make a move, but there he goes up the racetrack. Into the fence goes Hackney. Hackney hard up into the fence here. There goes the six ride. Going to get spun around as well. The 10 machine going to go around hard up into Leroy Koblenz there in the outside fence. Oh, man, Hackney was having such a great race. 
there in second. Finally hit a good restart there on the outside of our race leader. And unfortunately, just down through corner number three and four here. Just <clears throat> sends it in a little bit deep. He's trying to use that outside jump here, that outside lane. To his advantage, just gets in there a little bit too deep. Washes up the racetrack here, and as he does, he gets up into all the marbles, all the dirty track out there on the high side, and that car just continues to wash up the racetrack into the outside. Safer barrier here, and unfortunately, as he makes that contact, the car is just going to get very loose. It slips, slides around, digs into that wall, and goes for a quick little spin here, and or second place driver running into issues. And then McKellar in the six ride making some contact. There's the six was trying to jank up. McKellar couldn't get on the binders quick enough. You also see the 29 ride of Andrew Hainsley sliding him back there as well. Trying to stay out of the uh, carnage here down the front straight away. And unfortunately some of that carnage is going to find the 10 machine right here as... The 10 and the 6 going to make some contact there. The 10 right going to slide all the way up the racetrack into Leroy Koblenz here. And nowhere to go for Leroy as he makes some, some pretty hard contact there between himself and that 10 machine as cautions, breeding cautions once again. And we will get them all ready to go back to battle. It's Hackney down pit side getting some work done to that 91 right in. That's going to be a little bit of a breath of fresh air here. For the 71 machine of Greg O'Berry. As O'Berry's been able to hit these restarts perfectly. But the 91 ride of Keith Acne. Obviously, for that last caution flank, you can see he was starting to figure out what he was doing out there on the racetrack on these restarts. And he was able to kind of hit that restart perfectly. Give him a good run for his money there. So, unfortunately for Acne, did not work out the way he was hoping. And that will get us all stacked up, racked up, and ready to go back to green flag racing here once again. the green flag back out into the air quickly the 71 a grango berry gonna hit another perfect restart and as he does some more contact back there behind him and yet again another caution flag our outside of the front row here on the restart the 31 ride the track racer machine christopher dewald unfortunately gonna try to uh hold on to second once the uh, 45 ride a little tight right there, they make some contact. And as that happens, it just sends him up the track here. And a oh, hard hit right there for that 31 ride as well. That is a tough break for him. As that's just going to send him up the racetrack. You see the 43 of Roth trying to hold on to his ride as well as he got some contact there. He's able to keep a point in the right direction there. Unfortunately, not as lucky for this number 31 machine as we take a ride right on board here with them and really get a good look at what he saw here from the cockpit on the restart. Yeah, I think right there you can see it. He gets the contact. He counter steers and unfortunately just has to counter steer a little bit too much. So he's turning left here. Down in through quarter one. There's the contact. He cranks the wheel to the right. They're trying to correct it. Unfortunately, the car just hooks up and goes dead right on him. And straight up into that outside fence. And that's a tough one for the number 31 ride. Up in position number two there on the restart. And back-to-back -back restarts. Our second-place driver has had some issues. And 
Creating some carnage out there on the racetrack for everybody back there behind the 71 rider, right, Greg O'Berry. So O'Berry's been able to stay clean out in front here. Continues to hit these restarts, continue to keep putting himself in the best position. And fortunately for a lot of drivers back there behind him, they have not been so lucky as we'll get ready to go back to green flag racing. O'Berry going to be looking for another good restart here as the laps continue to click down this time by the start finish line. 97 of 150 laps run already and that means we're getting very very close to our <coughs> second third of the race being completed here 100 laps and 50 more laps left to go here in just a few more laps and that means that we'll get ready for a peacemaker gaming crank it up here on this restart as we're going to jump right on board here with Rango Berry, any of the drivers that are tuning in, they're going to get a good look and a good sights and sounds here on this number 71 and see what he sees here from the cockpit as we go back to green flag racing in just a few more moments. Caution, flag it'll fly here again as Tyler Humphrey and the Must Love Poodles and LR number 94 ride gonna run into some issues here yet again as the 94 ride trying to keep himself out of trouble. Looks like trouble gonna find him here possibly as sends it into corner number three and four and it's gonna get very loose. Has to check up from sliding into the outside fence there and unfortunately as he gets onto the binders, gets stopped on the race track. That will bring the Goshen flag right back out here in this one. So, quick concession Goshen flags here once again as we will get them all stacked up and racked up and ready to try it all over again here. Is out in front, Franco Berry looking to just try to hit this restart perfectly, looking to just try to keep these drivers at bay here on the evening as He's had his work cut out for him. He's had to do a lot of restarts. He's had to keep these drivers at bay, and he's going to have to try it all over again here. Once again, as the 14 of Daniel Doe right there behind him. Doe in position at number two. Nicholas Cody, Doug Roth, David, and Trailer rounding out our top five. And then we see Nathan Nixon, William McKellar, John Fowler, James Smith, and Zach Lockett rounding out our top ten here in this one.
stacked up, racked up, ready to go back the battle. Grango Berry out in front. He is going to see this green flag fly, and we will go back to green flag racing here from Martinsville Speedway as already inside 50 laps left to go slowly but surely closing up on to only a few short laps left here in this feature event and right now no one has led a lap other than this night or 71 ride of Grand Go Berry's oh Berry's been out in front he's been the reflection of perfection all evening long and he's looking to continue that trend he's looking to try to pick up the checkered flag here in this one as each and every one of these drivers trying to hunt him down, trying to figure out a way to get around that number 71 ride. Unfortunately, no one's been able to get successful here this evening. Keith Hackney had the best look, unfortunately, ended up in the wall and had some heavy, heavy damage, heavy contact there on the 91 ride. And he ended up down pit side here as we do see the caution flag coming back out here once again as Michael Madden... <laughs> Not having the night he was hoping for here in the 17 ride, the Sparkle and Shine, anything electric machine going to run into some issues here. And it's like some contact. John McNeil sends it in there a little bit too deep, gets onto the binder, slides into the back end of that 17 ride and spends him around for a loop-de-loop. -loop. And definitely not what he drew up here this evening. Started on the outside of the front row and unfortunately, Puts him deep in this field and uh, again getting tied up in another big hit, another big wreck there for that number 17 machine. Alrighty, as we will get him ready to go back to battle out in front. That 71 ride continuing to lead the way. Daniel Doe right there in position number two as we'll get ready to go back to battle here in just a few more moments. Drivers trying to fake each other out. Going down pit side or not going down pit side. I'm not sure if anyone has had to need to pit here yet today as everyone's been able to just kind of stay out and not really have to worry about headed down pit side. And it's been an interesting one without having to make those green flag pit stops. It's opened up the door here for everyone to kind of make it on one, la on one fuel tank and not having to come down pit side on the evening. Alrighty, it's the green flag back out into the air here. A great restart once again for Greg O'Berry. As O'Berry leads the way here at Martinsville Speedway. He has continued to show these drivers how to get it done. Daniel Doe right there in position number two. Doug Roth there in third with Nicholas Cody. 
David Trailer are top five, and these guys continue to just put on an absolutely amazing race for us. Lap after lap after lap, continue to hit their marks, continue to put on a great show for us. And man, these guys are making this look like a lot of fun out there on the racetrack. Caution flags aside, <clears throat> these guys are having a good time out there. Nathan Nixon up into six here in that six ride, and then we see some good racing back here. Willie McKellar, John Fowler up inside the top ten, and then we see James Smith there in position at number nine, and Zach Lockett up 19 positions, rounding out our top ten here. Is this number 93 ride, the Tennessee Titans ride, currently one of our hard chargers out there on the racetrack as we also see Keith Hackney rolling back up towards the top 10 here. So good to see Hackney making a rebound after his contact and incident early on in this race. So good to see him trying to rebound right now, trying to get himself to the front of the field. But, man, some crazy racing action as John McNeil right there as well. Heavy damage on that number 48 ride. He's looking to try to get it pointed back in the right direction here on the night. And then, obviously, a lot of good drivers back here having issues throughout the evening. A lot of drivers up and down days. Jeremy Vaughn, one of those drivers. Michael Madden, who started on the outside of the front row, also getting some pretty hard contact there and having some issues early on in the night as well. He's looking to try to get his fortunes turned around here, looking to try to get a better outcome here on the day as he's got his car hooked up and ready to play here in this one as well. And He's trying to get back up towards the top 10. Right there behind him, Christian Delgado in that 15th position. Jean Cozier started deeper in the field back in the 16th spot. He's right there in position number 16. He's up into position number 16, sorry, the 97 right of Sean Cozier of Gary Wright bringing up the rear of the field here as Wright right there in position number 17. Ty Dickinson there in 18th looking for the lucky dog here and he may be lucky enough to get it as he was the first car one lap down here and we do see that caution flank come back out as Andrew Hainsley running into some issues here deeper in the field and Fortunately for him, I'm not sure what happens here to the 29. He's definitely blinking, having some issues out there on the racetrack. And it looks like he loses it there at a quarter number four. Rear end slips out, goes around on him. And uh, fortunately, that will bring out yet again another caution flag. He takes his car down pit side here. So we will stack him up, rack him up, and we'll get ready to go back to green flag racing here once again.
here we go. We're going to go back to green flag racing here. 24 more laps left to go this time by the start finish line. Another great restart here for the 71 Rhyme. As here comes Doug Rump looking down to the inside contact into the 14 right somehow. They all keep it pointed in the right direction. Unfortunately here for Daniel Doe, he is going to slide backwards. More contact there with that number 14 right and he is just trying to hang on to that right as of right now as he slides all the way back into position number seven. And he is not going to be a friendly fan out there on the racetrack is Greg O'Berry. Love to see some more damage out there in this one as he's back in position number one and staying out in front here all evening long with Nicholas Cody. Up into position number two, Nathan Nixon. Now up into third, Doug Roth, David Trailer, our top five, Keith Hackney. Now back up in that sixth position. He's looking to work himself back inside the top five. Here is a very strong 91 ride here throughout the evening. We saw him up in position number two, made that mistake, went around up into the outside fence, had to come down pit side and had to unfortunately start deep in the field but he's been able to stay out of the carnage and able to work himself back up inside the top five here to see if he has anything late in this race as he battles door to door with David Trailer. And she says, I had a good run going, and then the lights on the dashboard disappeared, and my car completely shut off under the one yellow, and I couldn't get it refired. Oh, no, Andrew! My boy, yeah, you're having a great run, dude. You're having a great run. At one point there, we saw you up inside the top ten, having a good drive, a good race, and fortunately, things not going your way here late in this one as uh, that's a tough break right there, as you see. Five ride of, uh, or 91 ride of Keith Hackney and David Trailer still battling here as they're able to both work themselves around uh, Doug Roth here. So Roth sliding backwards in that number 43 ride. It's the Scary Strokes ride back in that sixth position. But Grango Berry out in front. He's trying to open up a bit of a lead here. Nicholas Cody not really letting him run away with it, but he's sticking right there with them as... He's not letting him run away. He's trying to stay right there as Zebra. Zebra coming in as well. Coming in, showing the love here. How are you, Zebra? Zebra coming in, showing the love. Says, Mike Volume seems a tad low. Oh, my gosh. Uh, can you check Cody DeForge's bumper? Front bumper or back bumper? Cody DeForge. Where is he out there on the racetrack? I'm pretty sure his bumper is... Uh, it's still on there. I don't know if he's got a back bumper with a nice little back bumper on there or not. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty clean out there and still in one piece, as that's always good. Wolfie coming in, showing the love here as uh, Wolfie coming in says, come on, number 43, cheering on Doug Roth. And Zebra coming in says, Team Cody DeForge, cheering on DeForge here in this one. Unfortunately for Cody DeForge, he was having a good run. Things went astray, had a little contact, and unfortunately... And number 24 ride just not having the night he was hoping for. Here is the Race City Racing memorabilia machine. Definitely looking to rebound, hoping for maybe some more caution flags where he can pass a few more drivers as that uh, ZL1 Camaro 24 ride. Looks like he maybe a little bit of right rear damage there on the car. Nothing really too major, though. Nothing too major on that car doesn't look like too much damage here we get our look at it here for the right rear doesn't look like a whole lot of damage tires still pointing the right direction there's some cosmetic damage there on the on the 24 ride but nothing too major right there as we'll get them stacked up racked up and ready to go back to green flag racing we'll take a look and see what happened here to bring out caution flag number and uh it's the 97 ride of sean cozier currently in the 19th position here angel wax 97 ride is going to lose the rear end goes for a bit of a slide down through corner of three and four and it's down into the infield wall there and Fortunately, gets that car nosed in there, trying to get her backed up and pointed back in the right direction. The caution flag flies as our race leaders go right on by right there, and it's a tough break for the 97. As we will get them stacked up and racked up and ready to go back to green flag racing here in this one. A bit of a wild evening here at Martinsville Speedway, and that's the thing with this racetrack. Sometimes... You can see some of the best racing action, kind of like we saw Sunday with the NASCAR series. You know, they didn't really have an abundance of caution flags or big wrecks or huge issues out there on the racetrack. 
here tonight in this one. A completely different story. A bit of a wreck fest out there. A lot of caution flags. A lot of beating and banging and battling out there. And uh, slowly but surely, though, we're getting closer and closer to this chankered flag. There's not a whole lot of laps left to go here. Only 12 more this time by the start finish line. Where every experience transports you to a world of fun. Play 18 holes of black light mini golf in ancient Egypt, a haunted house, and beyond the grave. Step inside our virtual reality arena where you take control of video games and virtual worlds. Battle robots, shoot zombies, and compete against your friends. Throw your next birthday with our VIP party pack. Our party pros are ready to entertain you with a fright fest you'll never forget. Perfect for an action-packed date night full of flirty fun. Our state-of-the-art arcade has the latest games with the coolest prizes. Be sure to feast on some tasty morsels in the graveyard grill. So come on, bring your ghoulish gang over to Scary Strokes, where every experience matters. <laughs> All righty, as we are back, the green flag racing as out in front of the 71 rider, Grand Go Berry continue to hold down the board here, but he's getting a good challenge right now as Nicholas Cody giving him the works here, a great restart for that Camaro as he works to the outside. Now a Grand Go Berry, O'Berry trying to hang on to the top spot, but that 45 ride showing some good speed here late in the race, and don't look now as here comes David Trailer and Keith Hackney both into this picture and all of a sudden Rango Berry has his hands full out there on the racetrack as O'Berry trying to hold down the fort trying to hold these guys off as come on live scene come up there we go well, there we go we are back here there we go sorry about that ladies and gentlemen as we are back to green flag racing the 71 ride of Grango Berry Continuing to lead the way here. O'Berry out in front. Nicholas Cody there in second. David Trailer, Heath Hackney, Daniel Doe, our top five. Here is the 14 ride, rejoins the top five. McKellar having a good run there in six. The Anything EC, number six machine of Nathan Mixon there in seven. John Fowler, Zach Lockett, and Doug Roth, our top ten. But contact, Roth into the 17 run of Michael Madden. The sparkle and shine, Anything EC, 17 ride. Going to go around, pointing in the wrong direction here once again and not the way Doug Roth wanted to finish off the evening here. Some hard contact there. And unfortunately, he was sliding backwards here after that restart. And just unfortunately, gets washed up the racetrack here a little bit. Battling with the 93 ride. And it just, oh, it just looks like the rear end just steps out on him here. Possibly the tires starting to fade away here on that 43 ride. It's the scary strokes. Number 43 loses the rear end, comes up into the anything EC. Number 17 in the sparkle and shine ride. Mm, it's going to need some buff in here, but I'm sure the sparkle and shine guys will be able to get that car back into uh, perfect looking condition here for the next race. But unfortunately, they're going to have their work cut out for him as... Michael Madden has been bounced around quite a bit here this evening. No fault of his own, just kind of the wrong place at the wrong time. And there's another look at it right there as the 17 car going backwards into that outside fence. And more heavy damage there for him. But we went back to green flag racing. The 45 ride of Nicholas Cody was given the works here to that 71 machine of Greg O'Berry. So O'Berry may have to mind his P's and Q's here late in this race and uh, trying to hold these guys off. And we see a couple new drivers up inside the top five here once again as the eight ride of David Trailer, the J.C. Newman Cigar Company, number 25 there in position number three. The Grip Hackney Live, NLR, Papa Mike Promotions, number 91, Keith Hackney. They're in position number four. And then you see the Sparkle and Shine, number 14 ride of Daniel Doe. They're in that fifth position as these drivers will get ready to go back to battle. McKellar back there in position number six, getting a great look there at that anything EC number 14 machine as he'll be starting to the outside of that ride, trying to get a good jump, trying to get a good roll here and trying to work himself up inside the top five here. We've seen 
some great races out of this 41 ride, some great finishes as well, and some tough breaks on the racetrack for a lot of these drivers here. But McKellar's been up inside the top 10 here pretty much all evening long. He's gotten collected in a couple things, a little bit of contact here, a little contact there. But for the most part, he's been able to keep that uh, 41 ride up towards the front of the field. Same with Nathan Nix, and already up 12 positions on the racetrack. He's looking to try to get back up towards the top three here. And John Fowler having a great run, currently in that eighth position as his scary strokes number 11 ride right there in the eighth position. Zach Lockett, though. Right now, our hard charger on the evening up 20 positions. Up inside the top 10, sort of back in 29. Finds himself here in that ninth spot inside the top 10, and he may not be done yet. He's got Christian Delgado to his outside. John McNeil, Jeremy Vaughn, James Smith, Ty Dickinson, and Gary Wright rounding out our top 15 as we got them stacked up, racked up, and ready to go here. For a very late race caution flag. A late race caution flag about to come out here and going to make things very interesting here. Greg O'Berry is going to have to try to hit the best restart he possibly can here. But he's had so many to do. He may have been giving up all of his secrets here, all of his tr tricks here. Maybe used up here on the evening from Martinsville Speedway, but he may have one more left in the tank as we are going to get ready to go back to green flag racing down through the Geico restart zone. We are back to battle here at Martinsville Speedway with only two more laps left to go. Two more laps as door to door for position number two. David Trailer working himself up into that second spot as contact. Oh man, John Fowler. Hard into the inside wall, the scary strokes number 11 machine getting tore up. The caution flag will come back out, and we will get ready for another NASCAR overtime, another green white checkered finish here. As we will take a look back and see what happened here on the restart, as unfortunately for Fowler, looks like he's gonna get took in three wide here. They send it down into corner number one, and He's just going to kind of get put in the middle as the 31 ride just up on the high side, getting a great drive, and unfortunately just kind of kept the 11 off the outside fence, and I'm not sure if the 48 ride realized that he was going to be exiting on the outside fence, having to give some room to the 31 ride, and they just make some contact over the nose. The 11 ride goes to the 48, and then hard into that inside wall, and Heavy contact there for John Fowler, having a great run up inside the top 10 here late in this race. And that unfortunately is going to put him deep in the field here against the Rusty Martin, trying to hang on to his 20 ride, trying to get checked up here. The 42 of Leroy Koblenz going to get hard into the 11 machine as well as you do see unfortunate break there for that number 20 ride as Russell Martin hard up into the outside fence there as well. Looks like Doug Roth going to try to get Checked up here to avoid contact with him. A good job there by Roth to avoid him as both scary strokes right. Almost running into some issues there down the back straightaway. Unfortunately for John Fowler, a lot of issues for him as we will get him stacked up, racked up, and ready to go back to green flag racing as Greg O'Berry, David Trailer, Nicholas Cody, Daniel Doe, Keith Hackney, our top five. Hackney now going to start down on the inside here. And for the first time this evening, David Trailer is going to experience a front row restart as he will start to the outside of O'Berry here. Nicholas Cody going to be right on the back bumper here of O'Berry. And he's seen that number 71 ride in with a lot of caution flags. We've seen a lot of restarts. And 45 ride seem to keep on getting a little bit better and a little bit better and he's going to have a tough pusher back there behind him as Keith Hackney can be starting in that fifth spot. He has been looking very, very fast. Almost one of the best cars out there on the racetrack here this evening and he's worked himself inside the top five. He was looking for a good restart there. Just unfortunately got hung out on the high side. Lost the spot there during that uh, caution or for this next caution flag and Fortunately, gave up that one spot, but now we'll get the inside lane, that preferred lane on the racetrack here, and we'll see if uh, he has something for that number 45 ride. It's going to be right in front of him, or the 71 of Greg O'Berry. They're all going to be trying to hang on to it, as you do see the 24 ride. Going to get the wave around right there, so that is going to move 24 ride of Cody DeForge a little closer towards the front of the field here, maybe 
Only a couple laps down now on that Race City Racing memorabilia number 24. And see the pair of Scary Strokes rides, Doug Roth and John Fowler, both taking the wave arounds as well. So trying to get back onto the lead lap themselves. As here you go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you came here for a show. Well, here you go. Another NASCAR overtime as the green flag back out into the air in a great start for Brango Berry. Definitely catching David Trailer a little off guard right there. Nicholas Cody going to try to work down to the inside of that 25 ride for position number two. And that's exactly what O'Berry wants to see. He wants to see them duke it out for that second spot and allow him to try to drive away with the win here today. As down across the line, we see that white flag fly. One more lap left to go here for Grango Berry as Nicholas Cody washes up the racetrack here, gets into the outside fence. Here goes a good run. For David Trailer down to the inside is Hackney. He's going to pull the Ross Chastain. He's going to make it work. Keith Hackney going to come home in second with a miraculous run there through corner number three and four as Greg O'Berry going to pick up his fourth checkered flag in eight races here on the series. But wowzers, what in the world did we just see? Someone may need to change Keith Hackney's last name to Chastain as my gosh, that was beautiful. A perfect reenactment of what we saw a couple seasons ago when Ross Chastain had to work himself into the playoffs here, into that championship for the 91 right has realized that he has an opportunity to do so to pick up a top three. He pushes it up into the outside fence, just holds down the throttle, and he doesn't miss a beat contact back there behind him as well. And he's able to come home with a solid second place run here in this one as we did see some contact back there. We'll take a look and see what happened as some hard contact between the 25 of David Trailer and the 45 of Nicholas Cody here as they came together. Let's take a look as uh, I don't think they were expecting the car high here and then they just kind of get tied together. Around goes the 25 ride. 45 and him going to nose each other right across the line there. And, and just what a what a run right there for Keith Hackney. That was, uh, that was absolutely wild. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was worth the price of admission right there out of the 91 machine pulling that move and Throughout all the caution flanks, through all, all the carnage here on the evening. Pulling well, the move of the history that we saw Ross Chastain do. We see Keith Hackney pull it off here at Martinsville as well to come home in position number two here. What a run and what a drive there by Hackney in the house of speed. Papa Mike Promotions and LR Machine. As we'll get ready to pull our race winner, Greg O'Berry, up into the broadcast booth here as O'Berry's going to burn down the house here, celebrating on the front straightaway here at Martinsville Speedway. O'Berry able to pick up his fourth checkered flag. The second time here in the season, he's went back to back, and he is 50% here on the season for winning percentage. A heck of a run and a heck of a drive there for him as he was the reflection of perfection here all evening long as Caleb Ramsey says, let's go, Ross. Ty Dickinson says, yikes. Uh, Mama Bear says, wow, what a move. What a move is correct, Mama Bear. Out of that 91, right? what a move is correct. As we will get ready to pull our top three up into the broadcast booth here for some post-race interviews. We're going to pull in our race winner here, Greg Berry. Yet again, another victory lane interview. He's got to be getting pretty good at these ones. Hey, Greg, it's Aaron up here in the Peacemaker Broadcasting Group. Did you get a copy? Hey, bud, I got you. Greg, man, what a run, what a drive here. Uh, a bit of a tough one. Uh, a lot of caution flags, a lot of restarts, but you're able to hit them perfectly here, able to hold them off and run a perfect race here, a absolute amazing race as you are the reflection of perfection here this evening, leading every single lap, whether it was under caution or green flag conditions. And you bring it home in victory lane for the fourth time here this evening, man. Take us back through this one and, and you know, how mentally straining it is uh, as a leader or as any of these drivers out there on the racetrack to, to deal with a lot of caution flags, to have to deal with a lot of pace laps. And, you know, that's a whole lot of time inside your head thinking about what has happened or what can happen. And it can really put yourself in a hole. Yeah, it was, uh, it was certainly a lot. You know, the vast majority of the race wasn't too big a deal. 
just get a good launch and nobody was running super hard but those last handful of restarts guys were really starting to turn it up a little bit track temperature was coming down so guys had more grip and and uh, they were running a little closer i think it was nick cody two or three restarts uh, i think it's the last one before the green white checker started um he ran me really hard uh, really clean but ran it really hard and that was the first time i felt like i actually had to do any put it do any work um but uh no nah, you know like appreciate the the win you know it's Glad I could I could pull it off fastest in practice, sit on the pole, lead all the laps, win the race. I mean that's great. Um, but I trade it for us to be able to get a good clean race here. I love this track, love to race here. Um, you know, maybe in the fall we come back we'll we'll be able to clean it up a little bit. But um hey, I'll take the checker. Absolutely. Anytime you can pick up a win, earn yourself those extra playoff points as well, and having a perfect night of the racetrack is definitely a whole lot of fun and uh you know, we saw a lot of different drivers there on your back bumper, a lot of different drivers here outside. Obviously, Keith Hackney, he gave you a good run there on the one restart. Unfortunately, went up a little too high in quarter number three and four there to your outside and got into some issues himself, had to rebound there, was able to snag uh, second place here away from David Trailer and Nicholas Cody there across the line as he pulled the Ross Chastain down through three and four and was able to drive around both those cars and come home in second here but uh, definitely looked like you know Hackney and maybe David Trailer Nicholas Cody there for a little bit we're going to give you a bit of a run for your money here if they didn't run into those issues and we saw some green flag racing uh, you know how do you feel with those fast cars back there behind you and how much work extra work you would have had to do here this evening yeah it was hard to tell you know who was really fast behind me um just because we never got a good enough green flag run um the couple of runs there with keith he was certainly quick enough um i think especially if we would had a short run there at the end he probably would have beat me um it took me it seemed like it took me about two laps to fire off once i got past that second full lap at speed then i could start inching away but uh, those first couple of laps seemed like putting a little bit of heat back in the tires that it cost me um and then Nick Cody again, he did a really good job. Um, and I think uh, uh, Daniel, uh, Danny Dow, he could have, he probably had a little bit of something too uh, to make it interesting if we if we could have got it clean and separated. But um, not to take anything away, you know, from anybody else that was up there. I, I just I didn't get to really see them and uh, side by side too much. But um, you know, so it was it was good. Like I said, just wish we could have had some more green flag. Absolutely. It definitely would have been a pleasure to see you guys battle a little bit more there under the green flag conditions here this evening. Unfortunately, not the case, but fortunately for yourself, you're able to use it all to your advantage and pick up your fourth checkered flag here in this series. The second time going back to back here in the series as well as you pick up another one here in this one, Greg, who would you like to thank yet again for another amazing race and another amazing performance? Yeah, I just want to... Uh want to shout out john fowler he's got a lot of you know that he's doing a lot trying to put it forth a lot of work a lot of effort and it's going to pay off you know with this league um he's uh he's really putting in a lot to it and i just appreciate what he's doing uh, giving us a good place to come out and race on wednesday nights appreciate you with the broadcast um all my teammates uh all those guys with uh, red sea and victory uh working together uh, there's just a, a good group of guys to spend some time with uh, but also uh, uh velocity pixels does all my paint schemes for me uh go check him out if you need anything he's uh doing a great job cody erdman look him up discord or, or instagram uh and get you taken care of Diddy, well, Greg, a great run and a great race. And Ty Dickinson says uh, congrats and says that, uh, you know, he, he's got a case of Michelob Ultra waiting for you. Yeah, when he ups his beer standard, then we can have a conversation. I, we've already had this conversation. I don't like dirty water. <laughs> true that, true that. Well, Greg, a great run and a great race. Hopefully you get the beverage of your choice here after another win this evening down in Victory Lane. And uh, hopefully we'll see you right back up here in the broadcast booth next week. Sounds good, man. Appreciate you. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, give it up there for our race winner, Greg O'Berry. Is Greg picking up the win here in this one? What a run, what a drive here, just hitting those restarts perfectly, keeping himself out of trouble here all evening long and able to pick up the win here this evening as we'll take another look back here at our second place finisher, Keith Hackneys. He makes the big move here at Martinsville. A little bit of shades of 
Ross Chastain as he finds himself in position number four on the final lap. Season opening here on the high side of three and four, and he decides to go for it. He pins her to the outside fence, holds down the throttle, and does not stop, and he's going to drive around our second and third place drivers and work himself into that second spot here on the evening. A amazing run, an amazing drive right there through three and four for Hackney, and uh, Definitely, I don't think any of these other drivers were expecting to see it here this evening. I don't think they were expecting to see that 91 ride make the move and just pan her to the wall and drives right around him. It worked in real life and it still works on video games even after the contact there behind him. He was already into second. It's what a run, what a drive there for Keith Hackney as we'll get ready to pull in Mr. Hackney here into the broadcast booth. Hey, Keith, it's Aaron up here in the Peacemaker Broadcasting booth. Take a copy. Hello. Keith, man, what a run, what a drive here as you're able to pin it up onto the wall here. A little Ross Chastain move at Martinsville, and you're able to make it count as you drive around both David Trailer and Nicholas Cody as they were making some contact down the back straight or front straight away anyways. Uh, you're able to avoid any contact with them and just use that outside lane and pick up a solid second place run here in this one after a very good start to the evening. You worked yourself up into position number two in a quick, quick hurry. You gave a good testing hand there to Grango Berry on the one restart. You unfortunately got up a little high in three and four. Sent it in there a little bit too deep and that caused some issues there for you. We saw him get into the wall and get spun around there and had to go all the way to the back of the pack there and try to rebound and he did slowly but surely worked yourself through the carnage through the mayhem and back up towards the front of the field here and then obviously making that move late in the race for a uh amazing amazing run yeah man i just uh i haven't had the the want toward the wheel to race uh I, t I said last week in the broadcast that I was done. I mean, it, it was nothing towards John or this league. It was just, man, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired of racing. And, and I've been racing all my life. And I've been on here for so long. And I'm just, I'm just tired, you know. And uh, I haven't ran anything all week. Uh, since that race last week, I turned I racing off. And I did not turn it back on until the session went up here. Uh John messaged me a couple times. Um, I just been sort of keeping my distance from everybody other than the guys on the team. Uh, me and Bryce was playing earlier today, uh, Cod, and he was like, you racing? I was like, ah, I don't know, man. But the only thing, honestly, really the only thing that kept me coming back is having that Papa Mike logo on my car because, you know, he's did so much for me, myself, this team, and he does so much for this sim, and that's the only thing. That brought me back here tonight because I I knew I had to you know I had duties I had I had to come I had to be here, um, but other than that, like I said I haven't practiced uh, I had a fast lap my second lap of qualifying and I kind of got sideways coming out of four and I was like well it's story of my life I'm always starting in the back here, and uh, we'll just try to stay out of the carnage and stuff like that which we did you know and then once I got up to second, you know I kept on trying to, we had so many restarts and. I about timed a couple of them, but Greg got the jump on me, and I I just I knew if I was gonna get by him, you know, I was gonna have to time it, and um, and I did, and you know, there again, I went into three and four. I seen I had him cleared, but I was trying to drive it in there harder than he was. Um, I should have backed it back down and kept him pinned down, um, but I just wanted that spot. I wanted to clear. Him. I wanted him to have to pass me, and uh, because he was he was good. Um, I noticed they was all shifting. I was not shifting. I stayed in fourth gear the whole race. Um, and that was the difference maker. But if we would have had some long green runs, I think that they probably would have wore their right rear out, and I probably could have pulled them back in a little bit. Um, but all in all, man, I, I can't complain. And it's Martinsville, and I don't know what how they're going to score that. But I made sure it wasn't in the rule book, you know, the little melon rule or whatever the hell they call it. And I said, you know what? I told all my guys I didn't care where I was running, if I was running last or if I was leading this thing, I was going to do it. And um, it sometimes it was going to sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. A lot of times you lose so much speed if you don't hit it right and you end up losing spots. But I just happened to hit it perfectly. And then I seen they got sideways uh, coming out of four. So I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. 
I kind of think I, I I would like to think that maybe I would have got those spots anyways, just because they got into it. Um, if I would have just rode normally or at least one of them. So, I mean, I don't know. All in all, I mean, it don't really bother me. It's for entertainment and I had a blast doing it and whoever seen it, I'm sure they enjoyed it as well. Absolutely, definitely a spectacular move, definitely awesome to watch out there and uh, using it to your advantage here to jump up into position number two to cap off uh, what could have been a bad night, but ended up being a very, very good night here for you and definitely uh, the rebound that you're looking for here in that 91 right after uh, a few tough, tough weeks here in this series, definitely not the outcomes that you were hoping for, not the performances that you were capable of having here, obviously getting collected in different incidences out there on the racetrack but you're able to work that 91 right up here in the second here for the second time here in the series and i'm sure without a doubt before long we'll see you up here in victory lane but that 90 or 71 ride of greg oberry has been a, a man on a mission so far and someone's got to try to knock him off the top spot here next week well maybe we can talk to the flagman from like stop doing so many of them cautions that'd be a start but but yeah man hats off to greg 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 is really good um but I know there's a couple guys in this league, including me, that is just as fast as him. Um, you know, everywhere we go. Uh, I'm speaking on myself here. Like I've been, I've showed speed and I've been fast every single week, but been in the wrong situations at the wrong times and just we end up getting taken out. You know, half the time or or whatever the case may be. So, you know, all in all, it, it is what it is, man. I'm just, uh, I hate these cars. If it was trucks, it would be a different story. But it's it, this is what we got to work with, and that's what John has given us, and uh, are giving us, and um, so yeah, we'll just we'll take it on the chin, and uh, it'll still probably be a, a race time decision next week too, if you want my honest opinion. So we'll keep it at that. Absolutely. Well, Keith, congratulations on a great run. Congratulations on a great drive here. As you parked that 91 right up here on the podium, who would you like to thank for such a strong run and strong performance here this evening? Oh, yeah, man, just all the guys at NLR, uh, guys that showed up tonight, you know, I mean, eh, I wish they would have better luck as well, but I feel like we're on the same boat for some obvious reason. I don't know why. Um, uh, Papa Mike, like I said, huge, huge uh, for everything that he does. Uh, Mama Bear, I see you out there. Um, John for putting this on. Um, I would say Grip Pack Me Live. Well, I can't say Grip Pack Me Live. I could. I just can't say Tunnel Vision anymore because we shut shop down. So um, we're uh, we're taking it by taking it by ear and, and seeing how it goes. And you for uh, broadcasting this thing. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Absolutely. Well, Keith, a great run and a great drive, and hopefully we'll see you back out there on the racetrack next week. And hopefully we'll see you right back up here in the broadcast booth, brother. All right, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your night. All right, you too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, give it up there for our second place finisher, Keith Hackney. Is Hackney coming in for another good run and another good race here for the 91? Ryan coming home in position number two, as Nathan Smith says, I'm telling you, every week for me, I feel like there's a lot of drivers that are saying that right now. That is for certain after a fairly chaotic evening here at Martinsville Speedway. I'm sure everyone's kind of on the uh, same notion, except for maybe... The 71, Greg O'Berry. I think he's the only one that's probably uh, not been really in that situation. Obviously picking up his fourth win as we'll get ready to pull in our third place finisher. The 14 ride of Daniel Dow is Dow coming home here in position number three. Daniel with a great run and a great drive. Parking that 14 ride up here on the front straight away on the podium after being able to squeeze by David Trailer and Nicholas Cody there at the line as we'll get him up here into the broadcast booth for our final interview of the evening. <clears throat> hey, Daniel, it's Aaron up here in the uh, Peacemaker Broadcasting booth. Did you get a copy? Sure, what's happening, guys? Not much, Daniel, man. What a run, what a race. A bit of a back-and-forth one here for a lot of drivers. Obviously, we saw a lot of contact, a lot of beating and banging, and, and we saw you there a couple of times, unfortunately, just having to restart there on the outside lane and a little contact or just, you know, getting in a little hot, washing up the racetrack. Kind of pushed you back there a few times, but you're able to battle back here late in the race for a top three run here and avoiding additional contact with the 25 and the 45 ride. Yeah, definitely. It was, uh, it was a hard-fought battle. Uh, man, Greg was a class of the field the whole night. He uh he definitely deserved that win. He uh he fought for that all night and 
I thought maybe he may fade toward the end. I thought it could have possibly used some of his tires up, but we had so many heat cycles on everything. I it probably just didn't even matter. But it was a it was a fun night. Just not a lot of giving, a little bit more taking from everybody up front, which you kind of expect that at short track races. But it was definitely a fun night. So uh, hats off to everybody. And like I said, if we could just clean up a few of those cautions, uh, it would have been a whole lot, you know, funner race for everyone to watch. Absolutely. Definitely would have been nice to see uh, some bigger, longer green flag runs and being able to really see what drivers have if they're on the racetrack when it comes to that long run racing here at the short track. Is some drivers can be very, very fast on the short run speed. Some drivers are a little bit more comfortable and a little better longer in the run when tires start to fade away. And as he said, really not a whole lot of green flag laps out there. You know, probably what 50 green flag laps <laughs> that we probably ran so i mean that right rear of grango berries might have been almost brand new might have still have the stickers left on it is all he really had to do for a lot of this race was uh just hit those restarts perfectly kind of keeping all the drivers off of them and staying out of the trouble keeping that extra car length or two that he got on the restarts down in the corner number one where he didn't have anyone drive into the back end of them and spin them around or anything else where we saw that be an issue here quite a bit this evening Oh, yeah, I started beside him there several times, and he was starting in first, and I was committed to starting in second. I did not want to take a chance of spinning my tires and wiping out the field or something like that. So I, I was like, as the later we go in the run, I'm sitting there thinking, maybe I get an advantage, maybe he'll spin his tires, but it never happened. Like I said, he, he did a great job, and like I said, he, he definitely deserved the W. I'd, I'd hate to see him get, get it taken away from him late in the, in the race from somebody getting into him or something. So like I said, he did great, and it – I just kind of persevered, kind of fell back seventh or eighth a couple of times, got shuffled back, bumped a little bit. And then, you know, like I said, it's, it was just good hard racing and just staying patient and hitting your marks. And you, it just goes to show you definitely can make it back up through there. Absolutely, you definitely can. You just got to keep yourself focused and mentally prepared out there on the racetrack and not giving up on yourself or giving up on your evening too early and just sticking with it. And we saw that for a lot of drivers, especially late in the race. You know, we see Keith Hackney, David Trailer up inside the top uh, five here. We see, you know, a couple other drivers that had issues like John McNeil or Christian Delgado who got tied up in, you know, a few incidences quite a bit out there on the racetrack and all of them having some serious issues where they had to restart the rear of the field and being able to rebound and still come home with the top 10 has got to be uh, a pretty nice feeling for those guys but it's it's a it's a very challenging thing to do to be mentally focused for a race like this with so many caution flags and so many laps under yellow where you're just kind of cruising around and in your own thoughts and everything else it becomes a very very tough game to play at that point in a totally different aspect than what it is just you know green flag racing for 150 laps out there you know how do you prepare or how do you focus on you know what you need to do out there daniel you just literally have to take it one lap at a time no matter if it's two laps of green lap you know green flag run or if it's 20 to 30 i mean you just literally have to take it one lap at a time hit your marks lift at the same spot just hoping that you know nobody's going to overdrive it and come in there and wipe you out which that happened to several people but like i said it's uh it's just a matter of hitting your marks and hoping everybody else can around you Absolutely. Well, Daniel, a great run and a great drive and a solid podium finish here for you tonight. Who would you like to thank here for such a great performance and strong drive here this evening? Definitely my sponsor, Sparkle and Shine, Sean Kozier. He does a lot for our race team. And like I said, just all my teammates, man, we we work together extremely well. I'd say we work as good together as any anybody race on our racing. We, we help each other out. And if somebody's faster, we always try to pass those tips along and nobody kind of holds anything in and like i said we just let the chips fall where they may on race day so like i said i just want to give them a huge shout out and a huge thanks beautiful daniel a great run and a great drive hopefully a bit of a momentum builder here for you and hopefully we'll see you right back up here in the broadcast booth next wednesday and maybe a couple spots better and up in victory lane yourself yes sir sounds good appreciate all you do for us absolutely brother enjoy the rest of your night thank you you too all righty, ladies and gentlemen, give it up there for Daniel Dow. Was Dow coming home here in position number three on the evening. Dow coming home there in that third spot with a great run and a great drive. And that sparkle and shine 14 ride. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do us. Oh, oh, wait, wait. 
nope, we didn't forget. We got one more thing left to go here. We got the random number generator pulled up here. A quick little giveaway here from our sponsor over at Butt Crack Motorsports. So we are going to click it a few times here, just kind of get it randomly going. We're going to stop, and then we're going to let you know that the next time that we hit the generate button, whichever position it lands on, as there's the first position to the 31st position, all in the draw. So whichever position this lands on, whichever number is a position, the corresponding driver that finished in that position will earn themselves an extra little bit of payday here from our boy Rusty Martin Jr. over there at Butt Crack Motorsports. As we are going to click it here a few times, kind of just get things going. All right, we're going to stop it right there. So the next time that we click this button, the winner of the Butt Crack Motorsports giveaway will be number 17. Number 17 wins it. Let's check here. Looks like Sean Cozier. The number 97 ride, the sparkle and shine machine of uh, Sean Cozier picking up the uh, extra payday here. Is number 17 getting the win and earning himself that extra bit of payday brought to you by Buck Crank Motorsports. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, unfortunately, that is going to do it here for us this evening. Some great racing action, a lot of fun, a lot of crazy action out there this evening. And I can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. I will see you guys all back here Probably tomorrow evening for something. I don't know what we got going on, but we'll figure something out. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow evening. But peace out for now. Much love, ladies and gentlemen. Roots, where fun meets fright. Where every experience transports you to a world of fun. Play 18 holes of black light mini golf in ancient Egypt. A haunted house and beyond the grave. Step inside our virtual reality arena, where you take control of video games and virtual worlds. Battle robots, shoot zombies, and compete against your friends. Throw your next birthday with our VIP party pack. Our party pros are ready to entertain you with a fright fest you'll never forget. Perfect for an action-packed date night full of flirty fun. Our state-of-the-art arcade has the latest games with the coolest prizes. Be sure to feast on some tasty morsels in the graveyard grill. So come on, bring your ghoulish gang over to Scary Strokes, where every experience matters. <laughs> Welcome to Scary Strokes.